Only the Board B Equality Mark ensures you know where your food comes from because it's independently checked at every stage. As a chef, I'm really interested to learn from other chefs, especially those who work in very different situations to me. And in this series, I'm visiting places which produce good quality food in large quantities. I'm sure school food has come a long way since I was at school. When me and my twin brother went to school, mom always gave us a packed lunch that often included homemade soup and brown bread. Today, I've come to Christ King's Girl Secondary School in Cork to find out about the food and offer here. Before visiting the canteen, I met the school's principal, Mary Keane, and asked her about the school's approach to food and school lunches. As our core business is teaching and learning, we've taken a whole school approach to promoting health and well-being. The reason why we are focusing on healthy eating is that all the research shows that the capacity for a student to learn effectively is influenced significantly by their health status. We've been working with Samantha in KC Catering and we're now able to provide the students with healthy food for both the morning break and for the lunch break. And that's giving students a learning experience that healthy food is tasty, it's affordable, it's nutritious, and it's helping them to make the right choices about good eating habits outside of school. In the early teens, girls in particular are very conscious of body image and body image is closely linked to self-esteem and low self-esteem on occasions may lead to eating disorders and health risks. So it's important for us to have programs in place to build self-esteem and self-confidence. We have a very active PE program here in the school and the PE teachers work at motivating the students to choose a lifestyle that's healthy and active. As a school, we have a very strong sporting tradition and we're involved in a wide number of sporting activities ranging from camogie, Gaelic football, to soccer, basketball, squash, rowing, and many more. We've been very successful at achievements both national, in provincial and county championships. And we also are very proud of our past pupil, Dervil O'Rourke, who has done wonderful achievements on the world stage. Well, congratulations to you and all the team here and the pupils. I'm really looking forward to seeing the canteen. Samantha, this is a very impressive operation. Tell me a little about what's going on here. Well, today now we have two classes in. We have the junior cycle and the senior cycle. Um, so we're basically doing what we normally would do, um, Nevin, so, which is our deli counter and our hot food and our soups. Um, this is a procedure we run every day um, in this school and a few more with it. How many people here? There's about 150 here now. Yeah, but there's 1,100 kids in this school. This is just one sample of what can come through on a daily basis. So Samantha, in here, they can come in and have their hot food or their salad buffet, is it behind me? Yeah. yeah. Basically, we, we form the queue on two sides. Their soup side is on this side, and then their, their hot food and their deli food is on this side. So basically, they, come, they they queue way up, and whatever hot dishes are on in the day, and they'll change daily. Um, they can take their pick. They know what's on. It's generally up on the menu. Or they can have their salad bar for wraps or for rolls or for salad bowls or for whatever it is they want off their deli unit. And Samantha, what is on the menu today? Uh, today we have a chicken and um, broccoli bake, and we have a leek and broccoli, uh, which is a vegetarian option, and we have a shepherd's pie. Our two soups on the other side um, are a vegetable soup, which is a staple. We always have vegetable soup, and we change our alternative soup every day. And today it's a chicken chorizo and butter bean. Chicken chorizo? And butter bean. That's very impressive. I wasn't getting that when I was at school. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the whole philosophy, the healthy eating and all that, because I notice there's no um, crisps, there's no soft drinks, you have water, juices. Tell me a little bit about that. We have a very basic philosophy when it comes down to it, um, Nevin, and that is that you can't take everything away from kids. You, what you have to do really primarily is educate them. 
So in the secondary school cycle, what we actually try to do is over the period of their time in the school, we try to educate them. So we introduce different foods all of the time. So it expands their palate so that they can make the correct choices for life when they leave school. Everything we have, we make ourselves. Um, it's all board be approved and it's all completely natural. So we just keep it very simple. We do the simple things right. And the menu changes every day? Yes, it does. We try very much to vary our hot dishes all of the time. So they could get different pasta bakes. You know, they could get a bolognese bake. There's new, there's a pasta Milan's. They're not necessarily bakes. We actually do pastas as well. We do noodle dishes. It, it depends on the day. How long are you here actually working in the schools, Matthew? We're here five years. Five years. Yes. Have you seen a change in you know, young people's eating habits, what they're, what they're bringing for lunch or buying for lunch or eating yes. with you? Absolutely. Um, kids have become a lot more health conscious. I assume that's education, you know. They'll tell us what they like and very often if it's healthy, we'll give them more of it. So what we really try to do as well is, is educate the junior cycle. And I find that the junior cycle are every year, year on in, year they're becoming more healthy. I know this is an all-girls school, but do you cater for boys' schools or mixed schools? Is there a difference? The boys are quite different, yeah. yeah. In what sense? What do they want? They want volume and they want feed me now, yeah. yeah. I have to say, Samantha, it's a great success to you and your team. Thank you for having me. It was Lovely to see you. Not every school has the facilities to provide hot food every day. So if you're preparing lunch boxes, this is some lovely inspiration ideas for you. Um, colourful, fresh and variety, I think that's the secret to doing it. So what I have here is some wholemeal wraps with some quality assured ham and turkey, a little bit of rocket, and it's also a little bit of mayonnaise and some ballymaloo relish. So it's lovely, fresh, very, very nice. So fruit is very important. And what I've done here is just boiled some melon and it's lovely and fresh. It'll keep in your fridge the night before. A little squeeze of lemon juice, some fresh strawberries, and then, of course, to get some calcium into your diet, some cubes of cheese, just some cheddar cheese and some seedless grapes. Vegetables are really, really important. So what we've done, these are called little batons. So they're cut about the size of your small finger. Okay. Everything is raw. You have little corn, you have tomatoes, and you have some munge too. And we have two different types of um, dips. We have a little... This here is a hummus done with some sun-dried tomato and chilli, so it's a little bit spicy. And then we have some regular hummus. Hummus is made from chickpeas, there's garlic, lemon, and some herbs in that, so it's lovely and fresh. These are lovely little, what we call bento boxes, and these originate in Japan. Everything is all uniformly cut, and everything is separated. So I have two different ideas, one for a wrap, which is just a banana, just a simple banana, roll in a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of vanilla yogurt, and what I've done here is just simply uh, rolled it right round and sliced it. This is one of my favorites here. So this is some wholemeal pita bread. So you're getting wholemeal into your diet, which is so important. So we have some turkey breast, quality assured. We also have a little bit of rocket and then some relish, a tomato relish, ballymaloo, something like that works really well. So these, them close on top. And then you have your lovely little sticks. So these are some bread sticks wrapped with a little bit of ham. You can use smoked ham, you can use some chicken, something like that. So they're a little snack. And then we have some nuts. So we have some fruit and nuts. So I'll just take a little handful. So we have some dried cranberries, full of protein. Very, very good. Keep your energy up so that you're all studying and concentrating in class. Isn't that very important? Of course it is. And of course, if you have nut allergy, you don't put any of that. Dried fruits like some cranberries are really, really good. So the last thing is this little bento box here. It's like a little flask. So what I have here, some noodles which are just blanched off. We have some vegetables in a light little bit of low salt soy sauce, a little bit of garlic and ginger. You can put cooked chicken into that, some cooked turkey or even some ham in that. So that's a quite an interesting one that, but you've got to make sure that it's closed really, really tight. I'm afraid it's going to go all over your school books. The last thing then is a smoothie. I love smoothies and they're so healthy, nutritious, sugar-free apple juice, lots of fruit. I'm using some blueberries, blackberries, banana in there for potassium. So there's lots of fruit in that and some yogurt a low-fat yogurt flavor with vanilla or fruit lovely and fresh and it's so healthy for you so it is ladies you want to pass that around there share that there and then we have this other box here so make sure you get some of the fruit and a little breadstick and the whole thing is variety so later on in the program I'll be back here cooking some lovely dishes for now it's back to black line This is a classic recipe for crepes, and crepes have to be lovely and light and thin. And I think this is a great dish to get your kids involved in cooking, because one of my first memories was baking pancakes, crepes, and making flapjacks. And that's where you get the love of food and appreciation for good food. So I'm going to show you how to make the batter first of all. I'm going to sieve in some plain flour. So this lightens the mixture. Crack one egg into this, into the middle. A little bit of sea salt. And then just slowly add in your milk, some full fat. Milk. Now, if you're stuck for time, you can put everything into the bowl and hand blend it, and it's very quick. The secret into making the batter is to let it rest. 
it relaxes it. You get a more enjoyable crepe to eat. So if you can make it the night before, it saves you time. You can have it for the breakfast and you can also have it for lunch or brunch. It's a great dish, this, for feeding kids. I am going to put in some parsley. A little bit of parsley, lovely colour. You can put chives, tarragon, just experiment with lots of different herbs. So that's ready. I'm going to let that rest for a few minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to prepare the asparagus and I'm also going to prepare the cheese and our cooked ham. And this is a great dish for using leftover cooked ham. So first of all, the asparagus. I think what I like about this is asparagus, like, you know, as a kid, I wouldn't have eaten asparagus, but my twins love asparagus now. And it's a great way of introducing some different vegetables. So we're going to steam it. Tiny wee touch of salt. I'm going to take about two or three minutes, and these are the asparagus spears. So the end of the asparagus is taken off. The centrepiece, if you get the full asparagus, is wonderful in soup. And it's also lovely cooked in a little bit of cream and smoked bacon. So I'm going to let them steam for a moment. Then we're going to just shave the cheese. Using a little slicer. So you want just even thickness of the cheese here. So this is not a very soft cheese. Mature cheddar would work really well in this dish. You can use the potato peeler, but these are so cool. They're great to have in your kitchen. What I'm going to do next before I slice the ham is preheat the pans. You can't start a crepe on a cold pan. So now I'm going to prepare my ham for the crepes. And this is some quality assured Irish ham. This is a great joint that you can cook well ahead, feed a large group if they're coming for Sunday lunch. And it's a great way of using leftover ham. Just make sure it's cool because it's easier to slice. So that's my ham ready. Now I'm going to make the crepes. Turn up the pan. A little drizzle of oil. Just a small amount of oil. So this is a great investment, is a crepe pan. They're a small little flat pan. They're not that expensive and they're a great thing to have. Whisk up your batter. And then just using a ladle, fill the center. That's what you want to hear. As soon as they go on, they begin to cook. And just swirl it around, nice and thin. Fill the whole pan. See the technique, make sure there's no holes. And the same for the next one. Just swirl it around, the hand's a little bit hot. Use the tea towel to hold it. Perfect. While they're on is remove the asparagus. I have a little bit of kitchen paper. So you can use lots of different vegetables and when you steam them, they keep their color, their nutrients. So this is a lovely healthy dish, so it is. Lots of green in there. So using a small little palette knife, be really careful, lift them up and then just turn them over. They're nice and golden brown. Lovely. Keep the heat low. I'm going to crack one egg and we are going to just smear it with the egg. So this gives a lovely kind of finish to it. Spoon it on with the back of the spoon. This is going to cook out. Same for this one. Flip this over. And that's going to cook the egg. It's still nice and warm. So we put one slice of cheese on both of these. Put our ham, which is nicely sliced. Plenty of that. Just divide it between the two. And then our asparagus. So they're still nice and warm. Three little asparagus. Switch the pans off. I don't want them to overcook anymore. And then just using your palette knife, flip this over. And the same for the next one. And that is a crepe and a half. Now, just to make it easier to lift, you can use a large fish slice. Arrange them on the plate. You can see how quick and easy this dish is. And I've transformed a very simple dish by using asparagus, ham and cheese, but you can experiment with different fillings. Look for the board be a quality mark because it looks after you. Look for the board be a quality mark because it looks after you. I've come back to Christ King Girls Secondary School in Cork to cook two real family favourites salmon fish cakes and strawberry ice cream sundae.
Fish cakes are a wonderful dish to introduce your children into eating fish and you can put lots of vegetables into it. The fish cakes I'm going to make now, you can bring them actually for a lunchbox. And if you get these insulated bento boxes, which are fantastic, they'll keep them warm. So the first thing we need to do for the fish cakes is to poach the fish. You can put any fish into them. I'm using some nice uh, salmon. It's already skinned. We're going to poach it in some milk. So pour this over. This is just some full fat milk. Put some salt and a little bit of pepper in this. And this is going to go into the oven. So I have the oven preheated at 180. A little bit of black pepper. It's a nice meaty piece of salmon. So that's going to take about between 18 to 20 minutes until it's just lovely and moist and just flakes away. So I'll pop that into the oven. So I already have some poached. And obviously when you poach fish, it does shrink. This is cold. So mashed potato. Now this is the basis for the fish cakes with the salmon. So all I've done is just steam some potatoes, put them through a potato ricer so there's no lumps in that. A little bit of milk and that's it. So they're cold. So this is a great way of using up if you've left over mashed potatoes. What I'm going to put in before I put in the fish is some spring onion. So this is going to give nice flavour and texture to the fish cakes. And that goes into the bowl. Now, some parsley. You can use any herbs, dill, fennel, basil. They all work really good with any kind of fish. And don't cut it too fine. Watch your fingers when you're doing this. And then that goes into the bowl. So the next thing we're gonna do is just flake our fish. And I'm just gonna do this literally with a spoon. And it's already cooked. Make sure there's no bones whatsoever. I'm not gonna flake the salmon too much. I want a little bit of texture and that you know when you're eating the fish cake that there's salmon in here. And then just Put this into your dish. So at this stage, you can put a little bit of curry paste. You can add lots of different spices if you want to, but I want to keep it very, very simple. We're going to mix this together, just using a spatula, and just gently mix this. You don't want to overwork the mixture. So fold this in here. So this is a great dish you can make ahead. They keep for a few days in your fridge, but also when you crumb them, you can freeze them. What I'm going to do next is using a potato scoop, and that's just to get an even size. You can spoon them if you want to, but this is what we call scaling. So we're just gonna put a little bit of flour, plain flour, just onto the board. Just a tiny little bit of flour. And then we just scoop this out. The flour just stops them from sticking. We'll do six. Another little bit more flour just over them. So just using a palette knife, flatten them and shape them like this. So they're like a little cake. Now these have got to be crumbed, so I don't want them too deep at the same time. I'm making you all hungry, am I? Yeah. <laughs> there's lovely colour in the fish cakes, and that's from the salmon, and also the spring onion. So I'm going to flour egg and bread crumb these. Just before I do that, I want to just lightly warm up the pan. We're going to bring over the fish cakes. And what we're going to do, we're going to dip them in some seasoned flour, one egg, a little bit of milk, and then some bread crumbs. Plain breadcrumbs, but you can add sesame seeds, you can add lots of different herbs or spices into the crumbs just to make it quite interesting. I'm going to keep them simple because the salmon should be the star of the show. Flour first and then the egg. What happens is the flour helps the egg stick. So make sure they're all completely coated and then in these lovely crumbs. And that's our salmon fish cake, as simple as that. So this technique is known as tapane. So you can do this with chicken goujons, you know, with pork chops, any kind of meat or fish. Like if you're making your own fish fingers, it's the same technique. Into flour, into some egg, and then into some breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs I'm using is called paco crumbs. So they're dried breadcrumbs and they're lovely and crunchy. So I'm just gonna crumb three of the fish cakes and then you just gotta wash your hands. So I'm gonna pan fry them, but you can grill them. If you want to, make sure the pan is nice and hot and bring over your fish cakes. So all you're doing is just really kind of cooking through, warming through the potato and having the crumbs lovely and golden brown. So to help with this cooking process, if you use some rapeseed oil and a little bit of butter, it gives lovely flavour the butter. So a tiny little bit of butter in here and just melt this. So see the way the pan is nice and hot? You've got to have that, okay? Because it's going to start cooking straight away. So really carefully, you'll hear them sizzling. And I'm literally just going to cook them for about maybe two to three minutes on either side until they're golden brown. The pan isn't up full because if it is, it's going to burn first of all the crumbs and I don't want that. So I want a nice even colour. When I'm going to flip them over because they're nice and soft, I'm going to use the palette knife, flip them over. So really essentially all you're doing is just reheating everything because the salmon is cooked, the potatoes is cooked. See the nice colour? So there's a lovely colour in that and you get that from the oil and the butter. So after a couple of minutes, that's the fish cakes done. We're going to serve up. A little bit of lemon, some nice salad and some mayonnaise. So it's a very, very simple dish. So let's get our fish cakes off. Just lift them up, be careful. 
and then a little bit of salad. I love salad with these. And then a little wedge of lemon. With the mayonnaise, you can put lots of different kind of like spices into it. You can put a little bit of garlic, crushed garlic, whole grain mayonnaise, or the zest of some lemon. So we'll just put that to the side. So it's a very, very simple dish. Finish with a little bit of parsley, just for a little bit of freshness. So I think one of these is definitely enough for a starter. Something like this, you pass it around and let people help themselves. In a lunchbox, one definitely, once it's insulated. And that's my salmon fish cakes. I think it's a lovely dish. On today's show, we've been focusing on healthy food. And I always think there's room for something sweet. I'm gonna show you the quickest, simplest strawberry ice cream, and it's really instant and very healthy. So the first thing into making this is using some strawberries, which are dehulled, so there's no hull in them. They're frozen, so that's how you're going to get the ice cream effect. We're gonna use some buttermilk, and this makes it really interesting, low in fat, fantastic for digestion, and gives a lovely sharp aftertaste, which works really well with the sweet strawberries. Some vanilla extract, and it's all just gonna go into the food processor, and a little touch of sugar, meringue. Some nice meringues and some fresh strawberries. So into the food processor, put in our strawberries. You can do this with raspberries, some blackberries, so whatever kind of fruits, and particularly if you get fruits during the summer and they're in abundance, hull them, freeze them, and make this ice cream. It's so delicious, so it is. Vanilla extract, I love this. Or you can use vanilla pod if you want to. So I'm gonna put lots of this in here. And there's lots of little black seeds from the vanilla. Really good. Some sugar, just a small amount of sugar in. And then we have some buttermilk. So you need to do this in a food processor. So just put the lid on. And then just start off in a slow speed, so excuse the noise. So you blend it for about two minutes. And you do a lovely soft cognac like that. Look how easy that is. Ice cream, instant, so delicious. So I'm just gonna scrape it into a bowl. So you can make this and then you can keep it into your freezer, but I'm gonna serve it up straight away. So you can vary it with a little touch of coconut milk but the buttermilk gives a lovely, lovely, refreshing taste. And the most important thing is you taste it. Mm. You're gonna like this, it's delicious. So, what I'm gonna do is just start to build up, just a little sundae. We're gonna use some fresh strawberries, and then we're gonna put in some meringue. Break up the meringue, just crumble it in here, and then we're gonna get our ice cream in. Plenty of this, because for me, this should be the star of the show. Some more strawberries. This can be a very quick, simple, and impressive dessert. And a little bit more meringue. So there's great texture from the meringue, the strawberries, and of course you have the instant strawberry ice cream. And just for a little bit of fun, we have just a couple of little wafers. How good does that look? And that's my instant strawberry sundae. Do you approve? Of course you do, you're trying to get taste of it. Very refreshing, isn't it? And when you have this, yes, creamy, and there's only buttermilk in it. Yeah, sorry. There's the home economics teacher. And when you have the strawberries and the meringue, it works so well together. You know, it really does. Now for the real. <laughs> in the next program, I'll be making some more speedy dishes, and I'll be cooking with Mary Kennedy, an old friend and a great cook. I hope you'll join us. Only the Board Be A Quality Mark ensures you know where your food comes from because it's independently checked at every stage.